but like Paulo Costanza and Brampton and like uh, Chris Lemke and like all those yeah. dudes. Anyway, a lot of yeah, we're the Brampton connection is strong too. From like Michael Sarah to just wanted to pump up Canada. Yeah. Canada's all right, everybody. <laughs> if Trump wins, come on over. <laughs> <laughs> we already got our passports ready. Uh, come on up, Lush. I want to ask you about <clears throat> Rise of the Pile of the Apes. Sure. So, you got any stories? Yeah, I have a really good one actually for that. Uh, so, James Franco and I have known each other for a while. We've done uh, quite a few projects together. This was like our third movie together. So when I showed up, I was you know fairly comfortable with him. Uh, so comfortable uh, to the degree that I decided to show up for rehearsal in my doctored scrubs, but I didn't have time to put on underwear. You know, sometimes it's like the last thing you want to do anyway on a hot day is just, you know, suffocate your boys. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. <laughs> so anyway, so I showed up for a rehearsal and I'm wearing these like kind of baggy like scrubs or whatever. I don't know if you guys know how it works, but you do like a like a, a limited like a like a director and cast blocking and then you do like a crew blocking with everybody and the whole crew shows up and I was doing this scene that's not in the movie where I'm I'm like throwing a ball against the wall and uh, James takes it from me and then he throws it back at me and I'm supposed to just catch it and like be like, hey, we gotta get down to business, man. And in the blocking, I decided to like do this weird little like I was gonna like grab at the ball like underneath my knee, and I went to do this like kick, and the pants split right up the middle, <laughs> like no underwear, and there was just no way to cover up just the danglage. It was all just there, and I like for a minute I kind of forgot that I didn't have underwear. I wasn't totally aware of how severe the situation was, so I didn't think. I was like, yeah, and like everyone was laughing. I was like, I guess that bit killed. My bits, and, uh, and I looked down. And there was my dick and balls just hanging out. And everyone was just laughing. I was like, that was like one of those bad nightmares. So then I, I had no way to fix the situation. The pants had ripped so badly that there was no way to like sort of cover it up. So I just had to like put it all, bundle, bunch it all into my hand, pile it in there, and then uh, and then I had to leave the set quite expediently. Uh, the image of you piling your penis and testicles into your hand is slightly traumatizing. <laughs> well, I said right before we came out, I really want to traumatize everybody. I don't, I don't know how it piles. I'm imagining it piling. It's like, it's like, it's like a rope. Yeah, yeah it's like a rope. Yeah, it's like a rope into the head. Like soft serve ice cream. Or <laughs> so that happened on that set. But uh, it was uh, it was great because of my relationship with James. He came to my trailer right afterwards and was just like, that was the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that happened. So that was pretty fun. Yeah, that was a great movie too, because it paved the way for a new reboot. They just did the third, I think. Yeah, they're, well, they're, I think, are they doing it now? Or they did it's it? Done. They did, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. My friend Judy Greer plays, I think it's Cornelia, is it? Or Cordelia? The Caesar's female Cornelia, ape yeah. uh, partner. Does anybody know the name of her? Cornelia? You know what? I can tell by the look on your faces, nobody cares anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> she's in she's in the hot chick ape. I thought you guys would go for that. Anyway. Well, so now I'm going to ask about this little movie that got delayed. Ah, Tucker and Dale. Yes, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. All right. Yeah, you guys are alive out there. Um, yeah, Tucker and Dale. It's funny you mentioned the delay. Uh, it was. Um, it was one of those movies that we made. <clears throat> um, 2010, I think. Yeah, 2010. We went and shot it out in Calgary in the woods, and it was Alan Tudyk and I, and, uh, and Katrina Bowden. It's and, Canada, by the way. Just uh, say Canada. Canada. I should say it's in Cochrane, Alberta, if you guys want to be even more confused. Uh, so we shot it up there, and it was like we shot it in this bubble. I, when I got the script, I, I was like, I don't want to do a movie called Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. That sounds so dumb. And then I read it, and I was like, that's genius. i got to do it. We talked about changing the title, Every, whatever. These are all issues that were a constant sort of, you know, what do you say now? Kind of the, something gets stuck in our crop. Yeah, I'd like to say that a lot. Stuck in our crop. It was a thorn in our sides for the whole thing. But we finished shooting the movie, and it was a blast to make, but it was very, uh, it was a very rushed process. And uh, Alan and I ended up with Eli, really kind of the director, <laughs> being very concerned if we were actually getting what we needed to get. And there were a lot of days riding home in the van where we were just like, literally going home and like, okay, with the, with the uh, call sheet for the day, and we're like crossing off what we think we still needed to get. So we were like, okay, we got that, we need to get that, this isn't gonna tie together, that's not gonna work, that angle didn't work. Like we were really concerned, <clears throat> the movie was just not gonna play. And then we finished shooting it and we were like, well, it was nice to meet you. Um, we, this movie shan't be seeing the light of day. And uh, yeah, at least we got a friendship out of this. 
And then uh, I maintained a friendship with Eli because I thought Eli was great, but he called me one night, uh, middle of the night, like 12.30, and was like, we got into Sundance. And I was like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> what did? What got into Sundance? <laughs> it's Eli, it's Tucker Dale got into Sundance. And I was just like, what? This little like weird B movie horror that we made in the woods. And I was like, bullshit. There's no way. And he was like, look, we're going to have like a screening at, at Jim Hansen, uh, Jim Hansen, Hansen, Jim Hansen, Jim, the lesser known Jim Hansen studio. <laughs> it's off some days. Yeah, he was major competition from Jim Hansen, you understand? Uh, so we went there and we watched the screening of it and we were just like blown away. We were like, wow, he really made a really good movie and we made a good movie and we were all very pleased with ourselves. And then all the craziness began. We went to Sundance, we killed, we won the Midnight Award there. We won uh, 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 South by Southwest, Audience Favorite Award. Uh, all this stuff started happening, and we got these big deals at the Sundance. Like There was a bunch of like very like, multi-million dollar deals on the table. And our producer, Thomas Augsburger, who's just this, uh, whatever, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, he, <clears throat> he turned down every offer because he thought that we'd get more. He'd never been to Sundance. He didn't know what he was doing. <clears throat> the deals just kept getting you know smaller and smaller. He's like, we'll, we'll get a studio deal, I promise you. And then we did. We got a universal deal. They wanted to, to distribute the movie, and they tested it. And I got all the like focus group like pages. And if you don't ever read those, if you ever get a chance to read the focus group feedback, it's so <laughs> yeah. weird. Um, they break it down into every element of our viewership into like the most base, racist kind of stupid terms. It's really weird. <laughs> But uh, then the movie tested higher. It was in like the 94th percentile for their testing. And then some one executive Universal had a meeting with our producer. And next thing we know, they pulled the offer off the table. So we were all like, what is this guy doing? Like, what, what could he possibly have said at that point? Turns out later he wanted more money. He's just this money machine. And uh, anyway, so it just went on and on and on, and the, the deals again out of the studios just got less and less. Once they hear that you don't have it, you know, your deal's not going through, it just everyone wants to bend you over and take advantage. And uh, so then it just sort of turned into this weird sliding scale. And uh, and then the people who offered us the least amount of money at Sundance, which was one million for the movie, came back <laughs> after all this and said, what do you think, million now? And he was like, yeah, I'll sell it for a million. And that was like, after three years of negotiating. So uh, then the movie came out with a very, very limited release on Magnolia, and it just uh, yeah, never really got the release that it deserved. Uh, it should have been like a cabin in the woods or whatever, you know, but it just, and it would have been, but. Which is another movie <clears throat> that got stuck in freaking limbo. Yeah, it's a weird genre, right? Like, we know this is like, it's a bit of a subset.